Hi, I'm Nigel the Shanghai Psychic. I can tune into your loved ones in the spirit world, but I can also tune into you, tell you about your path and the choices that you need to make and need to know. I'm currently giving 30% discount on all Tell Craig Your Story listeners. Just use the code Tell Craig Your Story for 30% off your first psychic reading with me online at Nigel the Shanghai Psychic. Hi guys, Craig here. Welcome to another edition of the podcast, Tell Craig Your Story. Today we'll be speaking to the performers and founders of The Silk Room. Uh, The Silk Room is the school of burlesque and cabaret shows. And I sat down and spoke to Mama Tequila, Tia Dian Fury, Booby Bonbon and Betty Snatch. And they talk about how they met. They also talk about their classes, where they're performing doing a burlesque and cabaret show in Shanghai. And also we talk about female empowerment and body positivity. But before we go, please go to our website. We are at Podbean. Tell Craig Your Story at podbean.com. We also have a link tree there which tells you where Tell Craig Your Story podcast is streaming. We are on all the major streaming services. We also have a YouTube channel there. Make sure you're subscribing to get all the latest videos. We have VK for our Russian listeners and WeChat for our Chinese listeners. At Tell Craig Your Story. All right, here we go. This is my chat with the burlesque performers of The Silk Room on Tell Craig Your Story podcast. Good evening, girls. How are you today? <laughs> girls, ladies, girls. Yes, hello. Yeah, hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. We're doing good. Yes. Mm-hmm. Thank you for being here. We're at uh, the 15th floor in the middle of Shanghai. I can see what's... Xi Yeah, Xi Jiawei. It's all happening. Thank you for joining us. Uh, tonight. to be here. Tonight I have the performers and founders, The Silk Room. Burlesque and Cabaret. Let's go through who we have today. So on the left, uh, we have Abubi. Yay. Welcome from Australia. Yep. Woo. Betty. Betty Snatch. Yes. Hi. Thank you for joining. G'day. And we also have <laughs> Cara, or yes. should I say... Cara LaCree is fine for now. Cara LaCree. Yes. Welcome. <laughs> from... Uh, originally um, from... From Donegal, Ireland. Okay, yes. and originally from... Brisbane, Australia. Come on, Ozzy, and... Belgium. 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 And we have Tia de Inferi. Yes! <laughs> Welcome, and you're originally from... Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Yeah, I'm from Hong Kong. Welcome. So the first question I wanted to ask, uh, ladies, is COVID. It's still around, but, uh, you know, we've all survived. Uh, how have you adapted and, uh, what um, you know... Tell us how you've got through. <laughs> We're being attacked by the... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Baby uh, literally another. just sprayed water <laughs> all over. Baby drove water on the pussy. Oh. <laughs> I'm keeping that in. <laughs> Her pussy pad, okay? Oh. <laughs> oh. Keep it down. 
like, we've already just started. <laughs> but he's a stalker. <laughs> Yes, COVID. The that's, that's great. It's a great start to the podcast. So tell, so tell us, how, how have you adapted in this period last year? So I was here when it started because I think like I returned back to China on the 28th of December 2019. Right. Um, and yeah, it was a little bit, it was a weird time because in the end, you know, like a lot of friends had already left for the holiday. I was gonna stay uh, with some other friends, but yeah, in the end, like most of the people left because everybody was like, "I'm not gonna stay here for yes. this. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm gonna go to Thailand. I'm gonna go here or there, and I'm gonna wait it out." And were you ever scared at a point, a time there? I had a moment where, like, literally, like, I had five people leaving in one day, and I couldn't wow. find fresh vegetables anymore, <laughs> <laughs> and that was a little moment of panic. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm in logistics, so I knew that my job, like, once this would all be over, like, we would have to start up. And once you were out, you weren't sure you would be able to come back in, so I chose to stay. Awesome. And I've been, for us, like, it's been extremely busy. Yeah. Um, because in logistics, like, it was super hard. And it's been like this until now and it's going to continue like this for another at yeah. least six months yeah so we find the next thing yeah. so. and what about you betty did you go back to australia or did you stay no, here as well so we were really lucky so i mean lots of things changed for us we went home for christmas i have a family i've got two children and a husband uh we went home for christmas and then when we came back it was um all of the fires in australia oh so right. i was in the process of um getting a fundraiser yes. show at the Pearl mm. um, to raise money for the victims and, and for animals and things like that in right. Australia. Very and that was close. with another drag king. Right. Um, Bob Villain, right? Bob Villain. Yeah. Bob Villain, the drag yeah. king. Um, so it was Betty and Bob's bushfire benefit. Come on. <laughs> Go on, alliteration. So Australian. <laughs> so Bob's also a, a, an Australian right. and has since moved back to Australia. But then COVID happened, and so those plans, it sort of felt weird to be trying to raise money for Australia when everything was happening in China. Yes. And then we, I think schools closed, and as things were getting worse here, I had pneumonia the year before. So oh, my yeah. Mom, we weren't ready to stay, so we packed our bags for two weeks in Thailand and stayed for a month in Thailand, and then... I think you're only allowed a four week visa before you have to renew again. So right. we've gone, well, instead of renewing, it looks like we have to work through the summer. Summer we were going to go to Bali, so we just flew from Thailand to Bali. Right. <laughs> and had a month in Bali. Tough and, times, yeah. Isn't it? Going straight to. Yeah, <laughs> it was really tropical. tough. <laughs> um, and then we had to get back before everything closed. We had flights cancelled back to back. Oh, dear. Um, and then. The flights that you transfer through to different to be able to come back into China, the countries were going from being a green coded country. Then now, if you went through them, you'd get a yellow code or it'd be a red code, and you couldn't do this, you couldn't do that. Eventually, after a number of um, cancelled flights, we got to go to Singapore before Singapore closed. Mm. We landed um, at like three o'clock in the afternoon in Singapore, and they were closing their flights at midnight. So. We were lucky to transit through, but we got to spend 25 hours in Singapore Airport, which is really fun with two children. Oh, dear. Um, and we got back into China two days before China closed. Mm -hmm. um, right. Since then, I think, as a family, we've grown. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people were complaining about having to be locked inside, even in Australia. They complained that it's they've got five days of quarantine. They've got to stay inside for five days. And there are people that have a house with a backyard and, you know, lots of room to move around. We're on the 10th floor in our apartment yeah. and we can't go outside today yeah, right. and it's two children locked up inside. Um, mm. But as a family, we grew. Um, we've right. worked out a lot of things to do. We didn't hate each other and it's worked out for us. You're Busy, survived. but it's definitely yeah. worked out for us. We've had a lot of fun with it. Definitely. Yeah. I went back to Australia and I stayed with my dad and I said, I'll only be three weeks, Dad. <laughs> Nine months later, I'm yeah. still with my dad. And it's uh, like, I can't believe it. I don't know. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> right. um, so, yeah, it was basically 
Well, the Silkroom had just done their The Jingle Bells Christmas show. And then we were like wrapping everything up. You know, after Christmas comes Chinese New Year holiday. So for my work, we got holidays very early. So we left China early. And when we left, it was like there was like a whisper on the right. grapevine. Right. That there's something happening. We're like, yes. it's fine. So we headed to Japan for three weeks because we get four weeks Chinese New Year holiday. And we were there three weeks. And while we were in Japan, everything started to unfold. And um, we extended our stay in Japan. So again, really lucky. Um, and then we came back into China when the borders and everything were still open. We managed to come back and be like, oh, it's not so great here. And we have, and my work, my job closed. So then we were like, we went back and we went to Thailand for Literally two weeks. Me going, What's Thailand like? I'm like, come. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay, Betty Snatch is in Thailand. Really, Thailand. Yeah. So very lucky, like, you know, touch wood. <clears throat> we got out again to Thailand. And by the time we got back in, um, just in time, borders closed. And of course, my parents, everyone was worried. Mm-hmm. You yes. know, back in Ireland, they were like, come home. And of course, so worried because nobody really knew what was happening. But it seemed to be under control. And of course, it was under control here because we were really only in lockdown for a month. Yeah. I think China got things under control yeah. a lot faster. Yeah, they saw it uh, really yes. quick. Because, like, I mean, now Ireland, a year later, is far worse. And yeah. like, my mom has just mm. come out of hospital. She had COVID. And like... Mm. This time last year, she was telling me to come home, and it's just how things has changed so quickly. Yes. And I actually think we just have to count yourself lucky for how yeah. China dealt with it, and Absolutely. the rest of the world that is kind of hoping coming out of it this year. I think it's a bit mm. of yeah. We I think here we tend to listen to the government more when it comes to being told to put on masks yeah. and to stay mm. inside. We follow what they say, whereas I think in a lot of other countries they're like nah. In yeah. Australia, was going, nah, I'm, I'm not wearing a mask. I'm still going, yeah. yeah. But, but first, I, same yeah, in America I, as well. Yeah, I feel though probably the hardest thing is we're all here and we're like, yeah, it's great here, but mm. none of us have been able to get home. You yes. know, yes. No, but none of us have been able to see parents that might have been sick or we don't mm. know, mm. you know, hopefully this summer, but who knows? And that's probably the hardest part of being in China. Definitely. Yeah. You know, trying to get yeah. back home. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So it's the same. There's like 40,000 UN to get from yeah. Shanghai to Sydney. It's just crazy. That's yeah. the thing is that the flights have opened up. Yeah. But you've got to pay for them. That's yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. and two weeks quarantine. And, two and weeks you might not get back, back in. That's too. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, like, yeah, it's, everything's up in the air. Yeah. And for you, Tia, how's, mm. it, how's it been for you? Well, I. One of my traits is to do fortune telling, so I kind of. So right. you knew it. You, you knew saw it. this happening. <laughs> so yeah, you <laughs> tell us about where were you? You should have told the the government quickly. It's like no, but it's like, <laughs> <laughs> but it's not sort of crazy to tell people something's up, especially that I'm not that great. I know exactly what happened. Hmm. I just know something's going up wrong. And I moved actually before COVID, and I moved into a villa house with hmm. all my animals. So luckily during COVID, although I can't see my family, I get to live in a huge space with my own garden. And I never stepped foot outside of my garden for four months, I think. Wow. Yeah, three and a half months. And I just end up like, you know, like decorating it as my studio. I was making costume for Kara. I was just hanging out with my pets. And I was doing a lot of fortune telling for people because everybody's lost. And I become like that could be like a whole yeah. new podcast. Uh, yeah, fortune telling. Absolutely, I'm yeah. very interested. In that. <laughs> it was very interesting. I never. This is this is the weird year where I actually made so much more income. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm you're like, like yeah, yeah. I'm having a saving like a real adult because normally I would spend it on like making costumes, you know, like buying yes. materials, and this year is finally yeah, it's it's a weird change. I don't know, like. Everybody, you know, like gain some and lose some. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about the the silk room. Yeah. Okay. Let's... How did it all come about? I do believe you were one of the founding yes. founding members. So yeah. let, let's talk about how it all started. Yeah. Uh, the, the the silk room. So the silk room kind of has evolved from a school, sort of the Shanghai School of Burlesque, which is still here. It's still up and running. Which was founded by Anna Ferlaxis, who is an international burlesque st- superstar from the UK. Um, so when I arrived in Shanghai now, almost five years ago, I, you know, I realized that there was, n- I was trying to find burlesque and troupe because I come from like burlesque troops and, you know, I started with the 
Irish Burlesque Academy in Ireland with Lisa Darling wow. um, when I was about 21. So that's like over 10 years ago. Um, I started there and then I moved to London and I was under Susie Mulner, which is, she's a, a experienced a choreographer and dancer. And she had a City Academy Burlesque in London. So I was with her troupe. So when I arrived in Shanghai, I knew I wanted to keep it going. Are they all different styles? Um, burlesque is everything and anything. So burlesque right. isn't just one style. Burlesque right. takes influence from many different performance arts, right? So, you know, maybe your background is dance. Maybe it's drama. Maybe it's comedy. So it's a performance art. But yeah, the type of burlesque I was doing with the Irish Burlesque Academy and the City Academy London was dance background and it was troupe and it was influenced by like 1920s Charleston, musical theatre and nouveau style. So I was heavily influenced by choreography and troupe work. So that's kind of where my background in burlesque came from. And when I got here, I was trying to find something. There was nothing here, but I happened upon Anna Furlaxis in the Shanghai School of Burlesque. And I met up with Anna and we sort of chatted and we realized that we were very different when it came to burlesque. So we got chatting and then she, I started to run um, classes, troop classes with Shanghai School of Burlesque. Um, and that's where Betty Snatch was. I met we her in met classes. We met at a workshop first. We met at a workshop, Anna Forlax's workshop yeah. first and then... I started to run classes and we realized that Anna was offering, she's like a, a solo burlesque performer, a right. striptease artist, <laughs> whereas I was troupe performers. So we kind of, we worked on it, but then Anna had to move back to the UK and mm-hmm. um, we tried to keep the Shanghai School of Burlesque running myself and Betty Snatch kind of, Betty came aboard and we were, you were doing the marketing yeah. and the flyers, but we realized it was evolving into something new and bigger, bigger. and Absolutely. expanding. And it was kind of, we were more about cabaret. And I know they're very similar, but they're also quite different, different cabaret. Yes. Like cabaret is, um, you know, that intimate, that sort of informal, that kind of interactive style where a lot of the time is you get the audience interacting with you and it's not about the striptease and it's, you know, it's we we're offering a lot, uh, different. Yeah, a lot of more, uh, a lot of more, uh-huh. a lot of different activity or dances. Yeah, and, and routines and things like yeah. that, styles. So, um, yeah, so we <clears> thought <throat> with the evolution of the school and with Anna going back, like Anna and the Shanghai School of Burlesque is still here, but the Silk Room then became the Silk Room School of Burlesque and Cabaret, and mm-hmm. it's a huge community that's grown yes. over the five years, mm-hmm. like. All how, the com- how many do you have? How many students? Oh, have like many? because we do different terms. Like each term is inspired or influenced. Like this term is uh, movie themed. Last right. term was murder mystery. Come on. So like it's all a storyline. It's a performance art. So like in any given term, we could have a hundred yeah. students. But that's like each term we do maybe two three terms in a year. Um, so each time it, it's a different subject or a different theme, theme and same. there's right. every single time we put on a new class there's people newbies we re- newbies we have returning performers and now we've um, we're slowly developing an alumni as well yes. so anyone that has performed with us um, we create the alumni so they can join in and so we keep up to date with chats just in general yeah. and when next shows will be or when classes will be on so they get first hand yes. of what's coming up so over the past five years, it's an it's amazing the growth and it's just continuing to grow and grow. Like this term alone, all our solo artists, bar maybe three, biggest. This is the biggest show, and we keep saying that every <laughs> new term and every new show is the biggest. Yes. This is the biggest, and we've got almost twenty solo performers nearly, and out of those twenty, three or four of us might have been previous solos. They're all brand new. Ah. Um, and it's just, and it's a mixture. It's the diversity. It's like, we've got local Chinese performers. We've got people from all walks of life. Now I was going to ask um, the question, yeah. uh, how, how are the, the Chinese, um, the female Chinese, have mm-hmm. they, how have they sort of reacted to it? Is it popular in this? In I mean, it's interesting you say female because it's not just about female yeah. you know burlesque is for everyone and anyone so we have um many different performers yes it's predominantly 
uh, female. Uh, we have had a couple of male performers yeah. come in and join the classes That's as well. Great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, male or non-binary? Non-binary, yes. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. So it's it's a very inclusive community. Um, but maybe Tia yeah, yeah. can talk a little bit more <laughs> tell, about tell the us local. About that, like, how, how, the, yeah. the, I mean, locals in general. Then how have they mm-hmm. sort of reacted to this? Is, uh, is it, the most memorable kind of reaction that I have is every time after we perform, I will have a lot of Chinese girls coming to me and ask me like, you know, like, how do you feel? Are you not shy? Like, what about if someone see you that knows you locally? And, you know, they ask all sort of questions and they also have like different body types. But mm. most of the time in China or Chinese standard, they only like a certain type of body. And when they see different body types going up, you know, like tall, short, like curvy or skinny or whatever. They feel very happy and they feel very encouraged. But some of them are really shy. So mm-hmm. it may take them a few shows before they finally join. So there were a few girls I actually talked to, you know, after the few shows until they finally become one of the students. But right. we do see the trend of like more and more girls coming in. Absolutely. We yeah. have had an influx as well, yeah. like just recently. For this group, mm. there's a lot more. Yeah. I think it's more about seeing someone who is kind of like similar to you, that kind of represents yes. a certain yes. type or no matter its nationality or body type or whatever, and they would feel like, ah, you know, it's actually safe and okay to join. So it's very nice. Like, when I come to class the first time, I was a bit worried, like, maybe they were just all tall, pretty girls. So let's talk about that then. How how did you join the soup? Hmm? How did you join the group? Um, I want to do burlesque since I was, like, super young, maybe around 12, when I saw Tita Fontis. Like, and I was like, oh my god, I, I want to be like this. And but then, you know, in, in a way that we're raised, you feel like that's somehow wrong, maybe like showing your body or whatever. But as I grow up, as I learn more about the culture, I get mm-hmm. more and more encouraged. And then one time, uh, I saw it on my friend's moment, um, about the show actually. And she's which show was it? Uh, it was, it was right, really back at the beginning, the winter, back at the beginning. The winter yeah, showcase, yeah, the winter showcase. That's the one yeah. you saw too. Yeah, yeah, that's how I also joined. Oh, yeah. Because oh, right. we're in the same, uh, yeah. We so that was probably our thing. second show we ever did as the Silk Room. Yeah, because mm. Grant had asked me to mm. be, like, the second photographer because he was mm. taking pictures that night and mm. he wanted somebody else. So we shot from the balcony. Yeah. Mm. And when I was shooting, I could see that I recognized one of the girls in the, in the group. And I was like, oh, I think that's her. But I hadn't spoken with her for so long. Mm. And so after the show, I like, texted her a message. And I'm kind of like very generic saying like, oh, I think like I saw you in a show. And um, because like, I was like, maybe it's not her. And then <laughs> <happy about it. laughs> I saw you in a burlesque show. Um, <laughs> and so, and I told her, I said, like, I have so many pictures. like, And she's like, oh, maybe we should meet up. And so we met up. And because I've been going to drag and burlesque shows for, like especially here but also back at home like I'm I really like performance art um, but I never ever thought that I as a person would like be someone on stage and and she was telling me she's like you gotta do this and you're gonna f- gonna feel so great and you know like it's great for your own kind of like body image and mm-hmm. so baby let's go back a bit and and tell everybody about how, how why did you come to shanghai and then how did you join the group as well like you were talking mm-hmm. about it before no okay so i'm probably the oldest of the group i'm 46 i came to china uh, nine years ago for what you're not the oldest of the group I know, no, <laughs> and that's the great thing. Like, um, it's all ages. That's and what Tia was saying there about shape sizes, and that's why burlesque and cabaret, and that's our motto for the Silk Room. It's all inclusive, yes. and you mm. walk into any class or any show, and you're going to see everyone from all walks of life, from all ages, all body sizes, and that is the history of burlesque. It is not just one type mm-hmm. fits yeah. all. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I just wanted to, you're not the oldest at 46. We will, we will talk about body <laughs> yeah. shapes and, and stereotypes a bit yeah, later. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So I came nine years ago and it's, when you get here, you either love it or you, and then you stay <laughs> or you hate it and then, and then you're then gone you stay. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then you So stay. true, but it's so true. And then you're gone in six months. You know, okay. like yeah. if, and but this was what I like this was my big dream to work in China mm-hmm. I visited like China on a on a trip a tourism trip yes. um, and I fell in love with Shanghai I fell in love with China the speed the energy um, 
especially like in in my type of work uh and i was kind of like well you know like that must be such a great experience you know like fast decision making um like really this kind of like rush type of job and that's exactly what i got and yeah i've been quite happy here and then two years ago i am it seems like way longer i know but i think it's two years ago so that's when i maybe three Mm-mm. Okay, two January years. 2019 yeah. was the winter show. Okay. Mm. So that's when I took the pictures and somehow then got convinced by this uh, girlfriend that this was the right thing to do. I'm still very grateful to her for that. And I started taking my first lessons. But the first, when I came in, I already said, like, I'm going to take these lessons. Yeah. But I'm never going to do a show. Yes. That was your first time into the class with me. But I, I just just from observation, I would just think that a lot of girls would be like absolutely that as well. oh, you, people. People, sorry, I keep yeah, saying yeah, girls. No, but yeah, be. but it's you know it's predominantly women, um. But it, again, it's everyone, and we're open to every artist. Um. But yes, you're right. Everyone, nearly everyone that comes into that class will say, "I'm just trying it now. I'm not mm. getting on that stage, and I'm definitely, definitely not getting down to tassels." And I'm like no one ever has to and then like <laughs> second week when's the show signing <laughs> up oh, solo auditions yeah so it's amazing That's because I hype them up with all of the costume talk and the True. show yeah. and you say you don't have to you don't have to perform it and I'm secretly behind her going yeah you do right. yeah you do it's, it's very fascinating because it's like and I think it's it's that yeah I don't know, it's that growth or there's something, I don't guess, Mm -hmm. what changed for you that you were like... Because like, I was also, I was in a quite very, in a difficult time in my life where I came from, let's say like a complicated um, relationship that had ended and I felt pretty badly about myself, you know, like I didn't really love myself at that moment. Mm. Um, And I think like doing the show, I'm sorry, doing the classes... And like seeing yourself, having to watch yourself in the mirror, which can be quite confronting, you know, like with my body size, you know, like it's not ideal. Um, it is ideal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it is. Well, at that time, I was kind of like, oh, I'm not feeling very happy. Um, but then, you know, like you learn how to move, you learn how to act, um, mm. because like it's all about that confidence, especially on stage. Like it's not so much about, of course, like it's about the dancing and, and, and you move around. But yeah, like I, I've done like stuff where you know, like for the first minute, I'm basically staring down the audience. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, like I said yesterday, one of the major things is to learn how to be still on stage too, and just right. command your audience, just yes. being mm-hmm. doing nothing. But it's also you talk about it's acting. The whole nature of burlesque is illusion. Mm. You know, it's yeah. that illusion. Mm-hmm. You're creating that illusion. Yeah. Um. I think it's yeah. interesting when people come up to us and go, oh, wow, you've got so much confidence. How do you do this? Mm. Um, and then today I was talking to someone and they've gone, well, how do you get up on stage? What do you do with the nerves? I said, the day for me, the day that the nerves stop happening, mm. I will stop dancing. I yeah. will stop performing because yeah. it's the nerves that keep me going and how you get up there for me because I've got my normal day life and my normal name and then I've got Betty. And mm-hmm. when I get on stage, that's when Betty comes out. Yes. And... Betty doesn't care about anything, whereas Carrie, when I'm performing or even rehearsing, I can't rehearse yeah, um, in front of the mirror. I can't look at the mirror. Carrie can't. But if Betty's there, Betty doesn't care. And it's really, I find it really interesting how I've separated the two. And how long did that take you to do? To separate the two? Yeah. I didn't get on stage and do a solo until I had a name. So, 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 let, so let's go back for you then, Betty. Let's go back for you. Like, uh, I'm from Australia as well. Majority yep. of my listeners are from Australia. So, yep. is it popular in Australia? And did you start doing it there and nope. then come back here? Or? So, I have a background in musical theatre and performing arts just in general. I right. did acting all through school, I did acting after school, and then theatre in Brisbane. I did, and, and dancing as well. So, when I was 18 was when I started dancing because I thought, hey, if I learn to sing and dance, I will get more jobs as an actor because having being a triple threat and doing musical theatre, you're going to get more money. So I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do that. But 
then everything changed and musical theatre took over my life rather than just acting. Um, I took dance classes and then I had children so everything sort of went on the back burner and when I came here I did a workshop with the Shanghai School of Burlesque. I think it was one of the first ones that they had um, and that was with anaphylaxis and from that point she's like when are you going to perform? I'm like no not ready yet. When are you going to perform? Not ready yet. Not going to happen. And it was a couple of years. So I've been in China now for 10 years. Um, it had been a couple of years before I even got on stage to perform. And that was because there was such a big gap from having children to performing again. I lost yeah. my nerve and I didn't want to. And it took me also from when I started to getting on stage quite a long time to find a name that I was comfortable with that... Mm that's what makes things difficult as well so I liked all old fashioned names and then yeah. I was doing CrossFit so I like weightlifting so Betty Snatch I'm not a snatch for for your girly bit <laughs> I'm a snatch because that's my weightlifting move that I like I sure uh, yeah. a lot of, you do a lot of thrusts I do a lot of thrusts <laughs> one of the names that I came up with was Scarlet Snatch and my sister's gone no it sounds like you've got a disease <laughs> so I'm like alright let's move on from that um, so yeah, it's the, I had the name and Betty Snatch was because it was combining dance, it was combining the old fashioned names that I liked and it was combining weightlifting and CrossFit, the stuff that I liked. So Betty seemed to have this persona that was much stronger than, than Carrie was. So when I get up on stage, that's, that's when I become Betty and that's when I don't care about anything. Whatever happens out there happens out there, but before I'm on stage I'm nervous as hell yes. backstage I need silence and I I go into my own little cocoon and people be walking around me and talking to me I'm like no just don't talk to me yes. I need silence I need to focus I have affirmations that I have been saying since I started musical theatre and since I started performing way back before children and I've said those same affirmations before every single show that I've done and even standing on the stage before the curtains are open or side of stage if I'm out in the audience I'm still saying those affirmations right before the music starts I will be panicking I'll be shaking or pacing back and forth and then the music starts and it's just bam that's everything is just lost yes if those nerves disappear and I don't have them before I perform then I will yeah I will stop because I uh, think that's really what drives you or drives me anyway I think that's for my for just all in entertainment performance mm. in general I mean I'm the same with music yeah. if you've got like something takes over yeah uh, I get nervous before and then once I'm there with the with with the band and I see everybody and I got all my equipment I know that everything's all right it's like okay yeah yeah mm. let's rock it out yeah I I agree with you and there's a lot of performers as well that are like that that they've got and even celebrities now they've where do you see them in an interview? They're still completely different. So if you were to bump into them, that they have that persona and that separates them from everyday life to when they're performing. I agree. Great. Mm. Tia, where, where did you get your name from? How did that all come about? Tia, the inferior, actually means goddess of the other world. So it's like just my geeky and nerdy side coming out. <laughs> <laughs> there were all these things about, you know, being extra feminine, you know, like the way I dance is super feminine, being very geeky and nerdy and all these things that I like. I used to get bullied about, like when I was younger. I was in a girls' school. So being in a like a full on girls or feminine environment used to freak me out. And joining the class is actually like my gift to myself, saying, Okay, before I turn thirty, I wanna face my biggest fear hmm. and just get rid of it. So I say if I throw myself in the class where it's like fully feminine, it doesn't necessarily have to be female, but everybody would be more feminine in a way, mm -hmm. then maybe I can try to face my fear and make friends. And at the same time, I feel like being on stage, being as Tia, is where I can celebrate all these, you know, like quote unquote flaws that I used to have that was bullied. Because now on stage, people cheer for it. Like the more, you know, like feminine or sexy I am, the more I dig into this genre, people seem to like it. And mm. that was great. Yeah. That's really cool. That's very interesting. I want to ask you the question about this. Uh, like, uh, all the girls have come to you, uh, you know, with a bit of a confidence sort of barrier. So it's not only just dancing and learning Absolutely. steps and all that. It's all about confidence, right? Absolutely. And um, it's the 
the dance or the choreography is probably the last bit. Yes. You know, because... <laughs> And I'm not, I'm not someone that has always been completely confident. And, yeah. you know, I've had to learn to accept, you know, my body and, you know, and I think burlesque, burlesque is everything. It can be satire. It can be comedy. It can be dance. It can be politics. It can be feminism. It can be empowering. But like one of the things too about burlesque is it's kind of then understanding yourself in yes. a way. So one of the things in, in the class is what I like to do is to make everyone feel comfortable first of all yes. drop down your sort of barriers that you have um, and also I learn from everyone else in the class it's not just me teaching you know and it's also not just me behind the shows it's all of us it's a huge community of all the performers everyone is whoever's in that class we're working together on breaking down barriers and yes. um, learning to maybe just even look in the mirror at ourselves mm -hmm. and learning to understand how our body moves because not everybody moves the same way so it's not just about here's choreography I'll, let's learn this exactly the same it's about yes. how does your body move to it and or what songs do you like so it's kind of it's more about just kind of seeing what your body can do and how it can express emotions feelings empower you Mm. change and you enhance like enhance the talents or like the things that are really beautiful about you yeah. that yes. you just enhance them yeah. um mm. and that you actually use that to then in the end also feel better about yourself exactly. mm. because <clears throat> yeah it's like you go on stage and you want to look your best right like no matter what you look like and some people have you know like some people are really great dancers uh, and i'm often a little bit jealous about that because like i really suck at it. <laughs> <laughs> baby doesn't <laughs> baby doesn't dance she like just owns everything I, i'm jealous of your boobs i yeah. just move <laughs> that's yeah. what i do well the next question is where does where does the name come from <laughs> her boobie, yeah. her boobie. Uh, is it not obvious for our listeners probably yes. not <laughs> Maybe yeah, we need this to see is some like, uh, <laughs> photos. Or, Why is that yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> This is a thing that everybody okay. always notices. So um, that was like very quickly chosen. And then the bonbon is because like a bonbon is round. And <laughs> I'm also <laughs> nicely round. Um, so booby bonbon. And it has like four bees. bees which also looks you, like boobs. Bees, so yeah. all of her bees are capitals. Right. Because they look like boobs. Got it. Got it. Um, hey, you know, like, just stay on brand. <laughs> um, but it's been a really fun uh, character to develop because in the beginning, you know, like you just choose a name, but the more you go on, the more you develop a character behind yes. that. Yeah. Um, and that is also one of the things that you learn during the workshops, like yeah. the, the soloist workshops is to learn how to kind of like bring a character absolutely mm -hmm. and if you come to any of our shows it's amazing every single soloist is completely different mm -hmm. and they're embodying someone different and of course that doesn't happen overnight like it's taken me 12 years and i'm still you know it's it's something that's an evolving process and it's something that like it, you create and it, you can keep creating it yes. and free, keep changing it and mm -hmm. yeah so i think the classes aren't just about learning routines they're about mm. uh maybe unearthing something inside you that's been that's laid dormant for a while that yeah. you, or maybe you didn't know was there mm. but it's uh, it's not me like we're learning from each other and we're mm. you know so that's the great thing like we just had a brainstorm and brunch last mm. week about developing our mm. solo ideas and like mm. everyone walked away there was like 25 of us yeah mm -hmm. and everyone walked away with like oh my god i've kind of such everyone a great came idea. with an i that was like mm. they came with an idea of what they wanted to do for a solo mm. and then some of them had music ideas some of them just had a general really broad idea of what they wanted to do mm. they pitched it to the group and pretty much everyone had something to say in a positive way yes. on how you can add to it and change mm. to it um change it and they come away with such a a really strong scaffolding for yeah. their solo so the creative process behind what burlesque is and cabaret is is the magic of it as well and yes. the shows are all about love all about passion oh. and all about like 
Well, that's what I was going to say. Like, how, how do you put a how do you put like a set list of, of like who who decides who goes first or what what what? what so that's one of the <laughs> most yeah. That, uh-huh. uh, that's a really that's one of the I'm not going to say one of the hardest parts of putting a show together because before I came to Shanghai, I had never put on a show sure. or produced a show. I was in shows and I was choreographing troop work for shows but never producing a massive show and mm. um yeah the running orders for the first few running orders I was doing it myself because Betty Snatch was involved performing in the shows yeah. whereas I was I never performed in the shows I was always backstage so a lot of things it's obviously different things like run in order because there might be soloists in yes. group routines so you can't come at one after the other you also want to start strong you also want to have group routines at the beginning group routines mm. in each act you also yeah, want to end strong you also want to start the second act strong so yes. it's like different styles as well yeah because the silk room offers so many different styles we want to showcase them throughout and you have different themes as well and different like themes. Saying, yeah. so well, at least the show is one theme right so yeah. all gotcha. of the classes leading up to the show are one theme so then when we come to the show hopefully soloists have an idea of that theme as well yeah. so it's then seeing what music also is going to go well mm. with each other yeah. so you don't have a whole slow act um trust yeah. me there's about 17 different drafts yeah. That, yeah. that me and betty snatch bounce up each other like does this work no that doesn't work i'm done i'm done let's cancel the whole show like have a was, shot of tequila and move on yeah <laughs> i was very close I to it was three shots I no free oh, M-R-E. Oh, yeah. i'm irish there's no limits uh, you're gonna shut you're gonna shut we all gonna shut yeah. um it's like the Late Late Show, uh, Irish Late Late Show. There's a catchphrase, and there's one for everyone in the audience, that's and that's it. basically <laughs> Mama Tequila. Um, I can't believe I've used the Late Late Show as a reference. Um, but yeah, it's it's back and forth, and the Murder Mystery Showcase last term, oh. I I basically nearly I nearly cancelled it because. Wow. Because we, we were trying to do a burlesque show within a whole storyline, within drama. Mm. And remember, most of us, all of us are... I'm not going to use the word amateur because we do this with love and passion. We A lot of us have experience in many different mm. backgrounds. Mm. But we also have... Full-time jobs. Full-time jobs. jobs. Yes. <laughs> Families. Families. So... <laughs> And this is we put our heart and soul into this, and we're rehearsing, and we're we get pulled, we wrote our own script for the murder mystery show. We had an MC, we had a narrator, mm. we had different roles. So each soloist was a character within the murder mystery. So that was a huge challenge. I think our first script writer, we had a couple of bottles of champagne and wine at my place. <laughs> and the second one we had margaritas yeah. so, but yeah and, and there's one thing that you haven't even sort of mentioned yet it's costumes I mean oh, oh my god but you, you're talking about organising a set or how you're going to oh. do the performance but costumes well I mean Booby, you've started your co- basically you can like you've started months ago for our show that's going to yeah, happen yeah. in June right. you know so <laughs> yeah because you see all these stuffed animals yeah it's not because I like stuff. <laughs> She's not a... Yeah. But that's... She doesn't have a fetish. It's just... Well, not that. Anyway. Yeah, it's... So you've got about, like, 20 stuffed animals in the corner yeah. there. Yeah. One and, day. And those are the ones that are not the good ones, because those are in a plastic bag, and protected it, and, from the crack. And who is this... Uh, oh, that's Dara. Lester. Lester. Lester right. is my stage So partner. all of this is part of your costume, basically. Yeah. Uh-huh. So costumes, I think, we come out... Uh, Carol will think when she starts the routines um, got, has the songs and stuff I'm like oh we could do this we could do this we could do this and then we've got Tia that goes no so <laughs> Tia is like her like, this costume will be awesome and we can have this colour and this colour and these sparkles no <laughs> so Tia is also sort of our fashion designer Tia's designed her logo the silk room as well right. so she helps and she has created one of my solo pieces but also we're in an amazing place in China where we also have Taobao. tailors and Taobao and right. the Taobao. beading and the markets for it. Like I've yeah. never right. experienced um, access Is it cheap to as well? Like, it can, like, I think like it's cheaper than if we were to buy costumes back in Australia. Oh, yes. Like there's a burlesque school, um, the Burlesque, Brisbane Burlesque Academy that I speak to a couple of the teachers there. I'm like, 
I can get your stuff if you want. Yeah. I can get you, yeah, I can get you rhinestones. I can get your tassels and send them to you because it's cheaper. But um, the thing with Taobao is it's not for so sizes that yes. are curvy, curvier than a size. So we've got, I've got a tailor that I go to. UK. And my tailor doesn't comment or doesn't bat an eyelid when I say, you know, I want it really low cut here and I want it... I want to be able to tear it away here. And she's, there have been times where she's just gone, yeah, I understand. I know, I know. There's this little, uh, little English that she speaks and she just grabs my boobs and she's like, like this. I'm like, yes, that's what it has to do. And I want to show this leg. And she's like, okay, okay. And she's never once commented on my size or body shape. Whereas you could go to some people and they're like, oh, so fat. No. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, okay, thanks. So she is amazing. Tia is amazing in what she can help design as well. And she talks to a lot of the people on Taobao and says, you need to do this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah. sometimes we can get custom sizes made mm. on Taobao. Right. Yeah. Um, but not all the time. Yeah, it, mm. it depends. But yeah, we it's, it's getting better too. Because uh, in China, like people with internet, you know, like with how we're openly talking about all topics, you know, it's not like, being curvy is a thing that's only for you know like more western country we have a lot of you know like this body type here as well and so you can see also on Taobao where they have more shops that you know celebrate a different type of body they are designer that makes specific design to curate different body shapes where i have a body where half of it is super c skinny and then like half of it is just like you know like more curvy and now i find more pieces that fit as well so it's been easier, like... No, it's starting yeah. to change. It's starting mm. to change. But still, like, a lo- it asks for a lot of creativity, mm-hmm. which I don't mind because, like, I'm kind of enjoying, like, creating these costumes and, like, I, f- I found out that rhinestoning is incredibly um, therapeutic. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's very repetitive. Um, it calms me down but yeah like creating the costume is like it's part of the vision and making that vision then actually reality can be quite challenging Um, because like Tia also did my Mm. costume last time (laughs) Mm. which was like an era piece of the 1920s 1910s yeah Mm. and that's also we're obviously all inspired by past um icons of burlesque yes. and the different fashion talk about them so like who's your favorite well i have i'm i love the 1920s um <laughs> and i because when i was in ireland actually i took charleston burlesque classes mm. and it wasn't my favorite to begin with because i was never like you have to be super like smiley and cheesy and happy and <laughs> joyous and bouncy and i wasn't really like that but i just have a super love for that era now and the music also my stage persona Lucy inhibitions is like prohibition that's why she's 1920s kind of style music um some of the costumes but then you go to the bump and grind artists and you've got like bump and grind burlesque and you've got your panel skirts which a lot I was inspired by that's kind of gypsy rose lee tempest Mm. tempest storm and then you've got and then I'm also inspired by classic like you've got feather fans like Sally Rand was around the 1920s and you know classic burlesque so we're just inspired by all different Mm. aspects of burlesque Uh, and then of course you've got the Moulin Rouge and you've got the Folie Berger I don't speak French but (laughs) the Folie Folie Berger Berger Um, (laughs) so Moulin Rouge and the Showgirl era and like um, of Paris so there's so many different influences that we we do a little nod to in a lot of our That's costume great. and a lot of the silk yeah. room um, so like a tribute to tributes yeah, yeah absolutely like but then of course there's like an emergence of burlesque that is brand new and unique mm. and like neo burlesque so are you more of a traditionalist that are you liking the way that the burlesque is I having, like love, modern burlesque oh I, I mean it all burlesque I think any performance art is always yeah. going to be inspired any art is going to be inspired by something or someone yes. you know I love all aspects because you know we we promote all aspects with the silk mm. room we do like diva mm. more modern kind of style burlesque we do 1920s we did a 1960s go-go burlesque because I mean it's just about taking influences from different aspects and making so you've an influence from that era but you make something new out of it as well so you don't want to copy something but then a lot of the time I do we do 
it's a tribute to someone like Bob Fosse, yeah. the choreographer. I mean, his moves will live throughout eternity, you know, and if, to do a Bob Fosse tribute, you gotta use his moves, you know, yes. and that's like, I mean, we're, we're, we're taking our hats off to someone like that and saying we love that style. This is iconic. I so, think a lot of people now will take moves from different places as well. Yeah. You, you can't reinvent the wheel. That's right, and yeah. Pretty much every dance move has probably already been created, and if you get a new one, then awesome. So yeah. I think I don't know how you do it, but for when I create stuff, I will also look at old videos, um, correct either correcting my own videos or looking at other performers and searching them all up on YouTube to see styles that I'm interested in, or yeah, basically seeing styles that I'm interested in, watching them and seeing they could be a move, like it could just be a one second move. And I'm like, oh, I really like that. And so then you can use that and you put it all together to create your own piece. So, but it's, it is still looking at other people and different eras and things like that. Yeah. Is it, is it popular in Shanghai or, or in China in general? Like, are there other, like Beijing, yeah. Guangzhou? Or do you um, know this? Or? I do know there's a school in Beijing, Moon Glow, and uh, ran by LaRue. But it's quite a small community. I mean, the mm. only one in Shanghai that's yes. doing burlesque and cabaret is the Silk Room, you know. And um, it's getting more popular. People that come to our shows absolutely love it. Like, I mean, absolutely. Mm. So many people are like, I'm joining. I need to join this. So it's definitely popular when people know about it. But there's not a lot of burlesque and cabaret, which is good. For us, because I know if I leave China, yeah. there's so much competition in every other yes. huge city in the world mm-hmm. because it's the revival has been huge, um, and it's everywhere, and it's you know it's very popular. But in Shanghai and in China, it's very new. It's dance new. is big, like yes. there's loads of dance oh, yes. videos. Yes, but no one ever does. Uh, there's never been burlesque. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And as we were talking about it before, uh, you're doing performances, you do a performance in June, we'll talk about that later, yeah. like uh, promoting it. Where you're performing, I just interviewed... Oh, just a little, little place called... <laughs> <laughs> so, I met uh, the same night that uh, I met uh, Grant uh, from the Pearl, is the, the night that I met... That was my it. birthday! And that was your birthday as well! <laughs> yes! It was fair, it was, so was meant, a, it was great, meant to be. It was a great <laughs> But uh, tell us uh, just a little bit about Grant. Uh, I mean, like, uh, I, what I, more is there to say? I, sp- the I spoke to him for Canadian? about two and a half hours <laughs> yeah. the other other week, and it was a great, great, great talk with him. And uh, he loves you guys uh, with lots of passion. Yeah. He he gives you a lot of support. So Absolutely, tell, he's, tell our, us about he's basically our Papa biggest. G. He's <laughs> incredibly he's biggest supportive, supportive of everything that we've done, and we'll bend over backwards for to accommodate. To accommodate as much yeah. as he can, because um, it's a risky. It is a risky yes. to me in the yes. overlap. It is risky, but he still does what he can. Yes, um, I think he's probably gotten into a lot of arguments for us. Um, we basically with us for yeah. us. <laughs> yes. Well, we put on private. It's all private events yeah. or shows. Mm-hmm. Like it's private family and friends. Um, we put on, but the Pearl has been. I mean, it's a fantastic venue. Uh. It's. It's the perfect, venue perfect of the it's bills. the venue of dreams for burlesque and cabaret. Yes. Like I mean, I've never performed anywhere throughout before coming to China. China, the Pearl has been the ultimate venue. Yeah. Yes. I mean, burlesque artists sometimes can perform in little pubs with no stage and you know sticky so floors to, from alcohol. To get a, a beautiful stage, to get a, it's, it's, it's a, a theatre. Theater. Yeah. Three it's floors. It's like an old school. Yeah, like it they got it the holds, I think, yeah. 300, around 300 people. Yeah. Got the rooms up the top and up yeah. the sides. Uh, and yeah. the bar. Yeah, they got the, the bar. bar. <laughs> but it's, it's not just about the venue. It's also about, like, Grant supporting what we're doing yes. because it's not very well known or supported in China. I mean, now it's getting better. But as Tia said, you know, mm. a lot of people, the expectation, if you're going to be on stage, is you have to look a certain way mm. and you have to be fully experienced and you have to be able to do cartwheels and splits and you have to be mm-hmm. skinny. Mm. You have to be professional dancers. And, you know, I've had experience in China of other venues saying... That's how you want to pick people came to you to hire some some performers as People well. can you know, people ask me for performers can, and when I suggest 
our performers they say no we're not looking for that and I was like if you're looking for a burlesque performer this is what you're looking for mm. and it's because they don't look a certain way yes. so many times I have to say no because the silk route stands for burlesque performers inclusivity so mm. sometimes it's no but also I've per- been asked to perform in places that's not the pearl and they say well you're not really typically for our stage we wouldn't put you on our mm. stage you're 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 too big for our stage but we'll put you on anyway things like that and I've had people say that to my face in China say I've mm-hmm. had one person say somebody recommended you I looked at your WeChat realised you were too big for our stage but we decided to go with you anyway I was like oh thanks a million <laughs> 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 um, that's that's the, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Grant and the Pearl have been yes. very supportive to yes. put us all on stage yeah it's very um, inclusive yeah. of the drag community as well. Yes. Um, the LGBT community. LGBTQI. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, very inclusive of everyone. Um, Biggest supportive, supportive, basically. I mean, yeah. and he's yeah. there cheering us on, yeah. taking Absolutely. all our photos. Yeah, all the photos that we have is. He was uh, so he was so happy the first time I performed. Because like also his wife came. Yes, he's a big me. fan. And big he, fan yes, of he's you, trying to get his wife. Yeah. <laughs> we're trying, we're yeah. trying to get her as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I but, brought flowers and it was yeah. Like but Grant really also great. recruits new students for the stuff. There you go. He's one yeah. of our recruiters. Yeah. We get messages. Oh, I've got another. I'm sending another person your way. <laughs> Maybe now the next thing is to get Grant up on stage. <laughs> well, half of the photos that I've seen, Grant's in them. Yeah, yeah. Would. We could give him a set of tassels. Yeah. <laughs> oh, give him some feathers. Feathers. You know, oh, that'd eat me. Tassels or assholes? Both. Yeah. <laughs> red ones. They're gonna be red. We'll make him some Canadian tassels. Yeah. <laughs> he was talking about female empowerment. Mm-hmm. Is this? Tell us about this. Tell I about mean, this. where do we start with this? It's sometimes yeah. a little bit complicated, right? Because like on one hand, you have female empowerment. You want to be a strong woman. Mm. You don't want to depend on your sexuality, right? Mm. So in one way, it's also a little bit looked down on to be too sexy. Yes. On the other hand, we all want to be sexy. And sometimes in our own women empowerment movement in our own head, it's sometimes a little bit difficult to, uh, to balance. But I think like I'm at least for me it's I'm feeling more and more comfortable you know like I am a woman I have my sexuality I want to look feminine and Mm. I don't really care anymore especially on stage I really don't care anymore it's and it's I think our message is very important it's about empowerment means you feel empowered by who you are in your body Um, it's about being looking at your body and being this is powerful look Mm. at my body I am empowered by it I'm empowered what it can do how it holds me um how I can move it Mm. and it's about embracing that and burlesque artists mainly we're doing it for ourselves we're not doing it for the audience of course there's an element of that we're doing it for ourselves and we're also the majority of people that go to a burlesque and cabaret show I know it's cliche to say this but it's predominantly women yeah. that go mm. to a show to yeah. be inspired and be yes. empowered by other women yes. and mm. the community as I said it is predominantly women it's not all women but this community that we've built through the Silk Room is also empowering we mm. empower each other yeah. and it's basically about feeling empowered by your body and what it can do Hi, I'm Tony Fair founder of Victorian Grooming Company Is your beard feeling dry or the skin underneath itchy? Maybe you'd rather soften and tame your beard instead. Our classic collection of beard oils, balms, and soaps will leave your beard looking, feeling, and smelling amazing. And if you prefer shaving, our pre-shave oils and shave soaps will give you a smooth and razor burn free shave. Handmade in Edmonton with natural ingredients, visit victoriangrooming.com.